Okay, today we're going to talk about a new front bearing we have uh, for the front transmission. We tested last winter and had zero failures with it. Uh, typically, this is the stock front bearing on the bottom shaft. It's a single roll ball bearing. We have trouble with those things breaking, so we started to come out with a uh, selling a double roll bearing ball bearing that was stronger yet. That seems to work pretty good, but under certain conditions, those things will still break if it you'd be abuse your transmission too much. So what we done last this year, we uh, last winter we tested. It's a coupling cone bearing. And I'm going to show you here today the things you have to go through to assemble your uh, transmission to do it. And uh, what we came up with that for testing this thing, for setting up this here is a pinion depth gauge to set your pinion depth. You can use this on any type of builds, this one or a standard build, because that's always the hardest thing is to set your pinion depth. This, this gauge is made for our ring and pinion, our ring gear and pinion. So you need to use it with ours. And uh, I'll get to that in the next step. Okay, now I'm going to go to the steps of uh, uh, putting this together. We installed the double, the heavy double ball bearing down inside the transmission already. Um, that's usually what we do all the time with the other bearing. And like I said, you always got to make that bearing slide in the case with a little, little slight drag is all. And what we do now is we'll install this thing. First thing you do is put the pinion shaft in, just like you always do. We'll stick that in here, get that up on there. Then we'll put the, you put the small, the small washer in the back, the 78,000 thick washer in the back with the heavy duty bearing. Put that on and then we're going to put the gears in this here is going to be for our, one of our pro v twins so with a half pint which is regardless going to do it the same way either either way it's going to be a uh, 14 15 16 17 gear set so we're going to put the reverse gear in first or low gear in i just want to say then you put the inch 230 spacer in then the next then we put the next gear in for second gear the next spacer would be this 78,000 spacer. This is the standard spacer we use for our four-speed kits. And we'll put that on the shaft. Then we'll do the next gear. It goes down in here. Then we do the next, the other inch two, the other inch two thirty spacer it goes in here. And now we do the tricky one. You gotta get this gear in here. You gotta kind of fish it down in here, and then you gotta move the shaft around to get this to get up on all the spacers and all the splines. Takes a little bit of a a little bit of yeah, not, not too bad once you, once, once you find a happy spot for it. Okay, we got the we got the bottom shaft in. All the gears are up in this line. And if you're ever put a transmission gear, if you haven't noticed before, that front gear only catches a little bit of that spline because it's got to go on a, with a spacer that holds it, everything tight. So what you want to use is this spacer here. This is the same space that we sell for our uh, double roll ball, ball bearing one. It's a 550,000 thick spacer. Just slide that on. The next step we're going to do, we're going to put the uh, pin and depth gauge in. This thing you can put on either way. It does not matter which way it goes in. So you, you put that in there. And then we'll put the uh, the bearings on it. Which there's just a slip fit. Use the bearings and the cups you're going to use on your build. We'll put this one in here. This is the, this is the right cup because it says R on it. We know that's what it is. Yeah, it don't really matter. You just want to, you don't really got to worry about backlash or like that. We're just going to put it in there so it can, you can really turn it. Because it's once it's in the center, that pretty fine. We'll put their shaft, their one in here. Okay, we got that in there. Okay, that's installed there. You want to take a look there, around back up how it looks. It's installed there, and it hits on the center line of that uh, pinion gear. And now we're going to tip the transmission down so we can put the top of it together. So we know the pinion's at the right depth because when you put it in there like that, that's where that thing's going to be riding. That's, that pinion depth gauge is the same diameter as the ID of the ring gear. It'd be the same diameter as this ring gear is right here. Right in this area here. The same diameter. So that's why. So you always want to set it up so the pinion depth is correct when, it, when the, you got full engagement. It's not too deep or too shallow. So next thing you got to do, then, you, then the next thing you have to do, you got to get one of a... Uh, you'll put this bearing on next. This bearing just sits on here like this. It's a press fit, so I just took a piece of pipe. A piece of pipe that fits over that shaft and don't hit the bearing at all. And we'll just tap right through the place. Okay, 
Okay, here it bottomed out there. All the way. Okay, that's the now you can install the pinion nut if you want. But we can wait on that. We'll wait till it gets a little further on that thing. We got to do it in the kit cousin when you buy the bearing, you get a pinion nut. We actually turn the nut down a little bit there because otherwise these flats will hit that bearing right there. So we put a little step on there to keep that nut flats off of that race here, the outer race. Of that. And then next thing you do, you buy this is our, our uh, sleeve that we sell. It's made to fit this bearing. You put that in, and you actually set that in the transmission case. Let me tap it in here. What's nice about this is you, you'll tap the we'll tap this in next in the, into there. It's just a slip fit. Tap it in until it gets there. Now, now you tell that's that's all the way down. The gears are spinning freely and until there's nothing no, nothing interfering. And then now what you do is you have to measure. What you'll do at this point, you'll measure it from here, this distance, from this distance here, with a dial in, with a with a uh, vernier calipers, a depth mic, whatever you want to do it with, and uh, that would be you just go like I just kind of do it like this. It's about 187 thousandths. Then you can take your pinion holder. This is set up for our half pints. It's got the disc brake puck weld on there. Otherwise, it's just our standard uh, pinion holder. This depth here is 140 thousandths. So 140 and 87, you need about 30, 38 thousandths in round numbers with the shims. So, and right there is 40, this is 40 thousandths, these two shims here. And you kind of test your, check your work, you set these things on here. We'll set this on here. And we'll do the bolts in here. And we'll run those bolts tight, and it should be right because I kind of set up ahead of time. But this, it actually make that it should have just a little bit of drag in there right now. But once we tighten the nut up, that'll try it. That'll draw all the stuff up tighter too. So we'll do that next. What I usually do, I just run this thing down here. I use a Milwaukee half inch impact, run it down tight like that. Then what I'll do, I'll just take and put some wicking grade, the 290 wicking grade Loctite. We'll take and put that right on those threads, and it'll, it'll wick down there, and it will it will seal that up. Seal those threads up and keep that nut from backing off. Now when that's tight, that should hold that pinion up. Now it should spin. Now it spins nice and easily. You can kind of check this back here. That it's it's just tight up against there, because that won't turn. So that is it. That's all you gotta do, and it will never break. Uh, It'll, it'll never break now because that bearing's got a cup and cone bearing is a lot, it can take a lot more thrust load than a ball bearing can.